Hello, and thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Tonight is a timely topic. I want to keep on track with reviewing favorite albums, and I should be getting to another one of those videos this weekend. But there is uh, quite an active conversation going on, especially over on quadraphonicquad.com, about Atmos, about music in Atmos right now. So I wanted to address that topic just kind of while it's hot, just join the conversation, uh, give my two cents, show off some albums, and um, didn't want to interrupt the flow of just talking about favorite albums, so I figured, you know what, I'll do a midweek thing, and um, this will kind of test this channel's ability to do like a rapid response to a topic. So with that said, let's get going. So there's a topic over on Quadraphonic Quad about Universal Music's recent announcement, I guess, via some emails that they will be partnering with Dolby to redo thousands of songs using Atmos technology. Now, from what I can tell, having read everything I can read on the topic, it's unknown how these songs will be mixed, whether they'll be completely remixed from multi-tracks in a discreet way, or whether they'll be upmixed, or whether some songs will be handled one way and other songs another, depending on the availability of master tapes and such. It's also not known how these songs will be distributed, whether they'll be put on Blu-rays or made available for download. Maybe they'll only be available at expositions, like you can listen to a couple of Pink Floyd songs right now if you go to expositions, but those mixes are not available at home. It's also not known maybe these songs are just being remixed for the use in movie soundtracks. That would kind of make sense to me, since licensing songs for movies is extremely lucrative. We just don't know, but it has um, increased the interest, the curiosity about speculation around Atmos in the last several weeks. So I had been thinking, man, I've been intending to do an Atmos video, and I better get around to it. So I'm going to do a bit of a worst to best of the Atmos music that I own. And that isn't like strictly how this is going to go. I've tried to set it up that way so that the music with the most payoff comes at the end. Let's put it that way. So first of all, let's start with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. This was released as a super mega ultra deluxe 50th anniversary edition, I want to say, uh, a couple of years ago. And why am I including it in this video? It only had a 5.1 mix on the Blu-ray, on this here Blu-ray. But the thing is, it was released in Atmos for theatrical-only listening. And so I included it in the video just as, like, the worst, because um, it actually wasn't sent to people's homes in Atmos. However, if you run the 5.1 Dolby True HD soundtrack through Atmos, it is rather interesting. I'm not saying that there's Atmos data included in the mix, because I don't believe there is, but maybe the way that even the True HD was set up was conducive to the algorithm doing cool stuff. I can vouch for at least, at the very least, the background vocals on this album being like massive behind you when you run the Dolby True HD soundtrack on this Blu-ray through Atmos. So there it is, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It's, it's what could have been Giles. Giles, if you ever see this video, please put the Atmos mix out um, for consumers, okay? It would be much appreciated. Next, we have Michael Schenker's Temple of Rock, Live in Madrid. 
and this comes next, like the the next worst, just because I don't get a lot of value out of listening to this in Atmos. Now, if you like the music, it rocks, it's powerful, the mix is great, it's crystal clear, good performance that night. Uh, I would say the vocalist is probably the best at his craft in the group, and that's saying something because this is all about a guitar hero. So, um, great performance if you're into this kind of rock, like arena rock. Um, just don't get this for the Atmos. Yes, it does make the experience like bigger in your room, but there's no bleeps and bloops and whiz bang stuff going on above your head, okay? Now, with that said, we have Luca Torilli's Rhapsody. This is kind of a European thing. Um, power metal of this kind is more popular over there, particularly around festival crowds. This is super energetic. It is operatic. It comes with um, two CDs of completely different material. So this Atmos experience is like 11 or 13 songs and the two CDs are a live show that includes similar material including some of the same songs but they're just not a one-for-one -one match so this has been specifically mixed and engineered to be an Atmos experience and it is pretty killer I can't by memory swear as to what's coming out of the heights but it does tend to anchor more of the rockin' type stuff down at ear level and send more of the ethereal stuff up, making a massive experience like you're in a cathedral listening to this. So it is very cool. The reason it comes so early in my list is just because the music is not going to appeal to everyone. My wife and I love it, um, but, you know, I have to be in the right mood even, so... It's not, you know, like a super mainstream, well-known artist, at least around these parts. And so take it with a grain of salt. Audition what you can online, and if you like the music and you're interested in Atmos, go ahead and pick this one up. I do recommend it for the Atmos experience. Next, we have RPWL. I've been wanting to include these guys in a review forever. I may have mentioned them in kind of a topical video, but I want to get around to doing their albums because they do have some cool ones. This concert is mostly focused on the Wanted album, and that was released in 5.1, um, but only in Dolby Digital. So eventually I'll get around to that album. Um, I'm not going to be able to give it full marks, um, mostly for that reason, but this concert was released in Atmos, and um, I have to say, similarly to Luca Torilli's Rhapsody, that this gives the impression of being at a very vibrant, active show. Um, there are occasional moments where discrete info is utilized in Atmos, and it is mostly during the theatrical parts of this show. So I like the music of this show. I don't always love it, but I do like it, and sometimes I love it. Uh, the Atmos is well used at certain times during this show, and um, at other times, you know, at all times, the music sounds good. It's well performed. I really dig this show. Not everybody's going to appreciate this show topically because it has... Um, some pretty critical things to say about some things that people can hold dear. So uh, I will say audition the material, and if it's right for you, check it out. RPWL, A New Dawn. Next, we have Hans Zimmer live in Prague, and this comes as early as it does in the list, just because I didn't make awesome notes about how well it utilizes Atmos. Uh, it is mixed very well. The material is kind of eclectic, but it's performed live with 
Hans playing instruments and conducting with uh, kind of a rock band orchestra kind of thing. And so there's a lot of continuity in the show, but there's also a lot of variety. This sounds absolutely freaking amazing. Um, definitely make sure that you have your subs at the appropriate level because it will give them a run for their money. Um, I just can't swear as to how discreetly the Atmos is used here, but it's definitely used to good effect for a live setting to give you the impression that you are in the space that this was performed in. So for what that's worth, this is cool. Next, we have Roger Waters' The Wall. Now, this has been um, the topic of recent discussions for a number of reasons. One, because Waters cuts a bunch of vignettes in between the segments of this show and um, some discussion of Waters' political views and stuff. I will just say that I have heard this Blu-ray soundtrack in Dolby True HD and in Atmos. And the Atmos absolutely wipes the floor with the, you know, True HD 7.1. So this is a show that um, discrete stuff going on up there, like an airplane flying into the auditorium and helicopters and sound effects and stuff. But even just when the music is playing, I switched back and forth between the soundtracks and it's just killer when the Atmos is on and it's not as much when it's just in Dolby True HD. So um, this was very well done in Atmos and if you like the show, this is definitely worth tracking down. This is The Wall live with his kind of telling the story of his family through the war, World War One, World War Two vignettes cut in between some some of the songs. All right. Now we're getting to some pretty cool titles. We have Metallica Through the Never. The Atmos soundtrack is only available on one edition. Ask me how I know. I have five versions of Through the Never on Blu-ray. Partly that's because I wanted 3D and 2D, and um, partly because I was hunting around for the Atmos version. It is only available in the ASCOT Elite edition from Germany. If it has that yellow bar across the top and says Atmos and ASCOT Elite, it is the right one. And I believe... Yeah, it comes in 3D and 2D. And it does mean that you'll need a Region B machine or an unlocked machine. So I've unlocked my Oppo with a hardware unlock that I got on eBay for around 50 bucks or 40 bucks. So well worth it to me because I can play European discs whenever I want. This is awesome. Musically, I wouldn't say that you can discreetly detect what's going on with the Atmos, but they have very carefully interspersed segments of the movie that are very theatrical, such as when the stage breaks apart uh, during Injustice for All, when the Tesla coil goes off during Ride the Lightning, when the protagonist has his battle with the four horsemen and like everything shatters apart and the city kind of explodes. Um, there are some very, 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 very cool Atmos moments on this. By design, they made sure of it. So the music is great. Um, I'm not a huge latter-day Metallica fan, but they won me over with this. They just really did it right. They spent the money. They hired the right people, they worked with the right people, they rehearsed it, they designed it, they pulled it off for what this is. It's absolutely fabulous. They give a reasonably good performance as a band, as performers. Um, and like I said, the production around them is just really doing this right. So I especially love it in 3D. But if you only watch it in 2D, it's pretty super cool as well.
but they did happen to do the 3D the right way as well. They filmed it in 3D. All right, so I can't recommend this highly enough in either 2D or 3D. Here we go. Booka Shade Galvany Street. I intend to do a dedicated review of this sometime, but since I hadn't got around to it yet, at least I can mention it briefly here. This does make discreet, bonkers use of those heights up there in the ceiling. Okay? It's mostly electronic music, and if that, strictly speaking, isn't your thing, I don't know if this will win you over, but um, the Atmos experience of it does elevate the whole experience for me, and it could for you. I happen to like this musically. Um, there is plenty of room in my collection for electronic stuff, so audition it. If it sounds enjoyable to you, which I think it should, uh, it's well done. Um, yeah, but it's a matter of taste, right? If, if you hate electronic stuff, maybe avoid. If you have latitude for that, give this a shot. The Atmos does stand up and it is a very effective, cool part of this Blu-ray. All right, NXS Kick. So again, this is what astounds me. Sgt. Pepper's was not put out with Atmos, even though that was obviously mixed. But this is a Giles Martin production, and it was put out in Atmos. NSX, Kick, 30. And um, I'll tell you, I'm not the biggest NXS fan around. Um, and just on its own, this album... I mean, I gave this album a chance at all because of the surround mix. I knew a lot of the singles like everyone else. New Sensation, Devil Inside, Need You Tonight, Never Tear Us Apart, and so forth. But um, the Atmos is fantastic. I have heard very mixed reviews about people listening to this downmixed on like a 5.1 system. So I have to think that the Atmos on this is an important part of the experience that, like, if you get this and just play it as a down mix, it might not do it for you. So I try to be, like, very truthful on this channel. I don't want people going out and getting stuff and being disappointed. You may go get this and play it on a 7.1 system or a 5.1 system and think it's great, but maybe read some reviews first um, from people who have done that. Um, but I can vouch for this in Atmos. I really, really like it. I return to it. And so for an album that I never even gave a chance to, it has won me over with its Atmos mix. So kudos to you, Giles, and thanks for releasing this to our homes. I totally dig this, and please put out more Atmos music. So now we get to one of the coolest albums that has come my way because of this surround sound fascination of mine. It's one of the coolest things that I love about this hobby, that it has exposed me to music, to artists, to songs that I never would have come across any other way, except I heard that it had received an excellent surround mix. This is Kraftwerk Numbers. It's a subset of their much larger catalog box set. Catalog, I believe, has like their entire catalog re-recorded. Um, so it's not necessarily the original studio tracks, but they've re-recorded like everything in their catalog and put it all out on 3D Atmos Blu-rays. So this is um, a single 3D Blu-ray and a DVD. I recall. So no Atmos on the DVD, but you at least get the uh, Dolby Audio 5.1 on the DVD. But on the Blu-ray, it's 3D. You can watch it in 2D if you want, but you get the Atmos soundtrack. And out of any Atmos album in my collection, if you want one that absolutely goes crazy with the heights, it is Kraftwerk's catalog or numbers. There's absolutely discreet, crazy, important stuff going on up in those heights. 
audition this material if you're not familiar with Autobahn or any of their other songs. See if it's for you. It is very electronic and maybe that is what makes it easy for them to break super discreet stuff out up into those heights, but for some reason electronic artists tend to get pretty discreet with those heights. So if you don't love electronic music, maybe give it a chance. Um, it'll definitely open up some Atmos for you and some RO3D. And I'm going to talk about RO3D in another video. All right, so Kraftwerk, catalog or numbers. I love this. The Atmos is fantastic. The only question is, you know, do you like the music? Um, even if you don't, maybe just pick it up, get a kick out of the Atmos, and, and sell it back on the used market or something. All right? I think it's worth it. And finally, REM's Automatic for the People. And in the box comes, I think, like three CDs. So you get the album remastered, you get some live stuff, some demos and outtakes and whatnot, and then you get this Blu-ray housed by Michael Stipe's face. I will tell a frightening story about ordering this from Amazon Germany. Everything turned out okay, but I could have been like on the hook for at least the cost of the album um, to like double the cost. I ended up getting this for like 42 bucks. So that's why I took a risk on Amazon Germany. And they did make everything right in the end. They just caused me some concern that I was going to be on the hook for like up to double the cost of the album. All right, because I wasn't sure they were going to accept a return. And then they like, not only I had the original charge of the album, but they were going to charge me for the second copy that they sent me. So anyway, disc four, automatic for the people, Blu-ray does have an Atmos mix. Um, the thing that I think is particularly cool about this album coming out on Atmos is it already has come out on 5.1, an Elliott Shiner mix. It is a very good Elliott Shiner mix. And the thing that I enjoy is that you can compare the two experiences. I will probably do like a um, Atmos versus 5.1 punch out video at some point. So I'll just say here that they are very different experiences. Um, at certain moments, I think I prefer one over the other, and then at other moments, the other over the one. Um, but I'm very glad that I have this. I think it does bring something unique and valuable to the table. And even if you have the 5.1 DVD audio, the Elliott Shiner mix, I think you should still pick this up if you can play Atmos. So again, some of the reviews I've read from people playing this down mixed on a 7.1 or a 5.1 system, they don't seem to be hearing the things in the same balance that I'm hearing. And that could come down to preference, it could come down to taste, but it also might come down to the engineers just focusing on an Atmos setup when they mix this and assuming that a down mix would work out fine and maybe not testing that on a calibrated um, 5.1 or 7.1 studio system. I don't know, I would think testing a down mix would be just something that you automatically do before you release a product. But, I'm just reporting the news, people have not given great reviews of listening to this through a down mix system. So just buyer beware and maybe go read some reviews because maybe I focused on the negative and there are some people who have claimed that hey I'm on a 5.1 system and this sounds just fine. I'm on a native Atmos system and this sounds great. I love it. Um, it absolutely will get frequent repeated listens around here. Now um, I wanted to do a separate RO3D video so that is forthcoming, but I wanted to keep the videos separate to just not confuse the topic. Because both are 3D sound, um, but there are important differences. 
Atmos works off of Dolby True HD, which can go all the way to 7.1 at your level. So center, left, right, surround, right, surround, left, rear, right, rear, left. And then additionally, it can support four speakers in the ceiling, or maybe even more, maybe at home. Um, but I'm stopping at four because that's what my AVR can power and maybe you can do more if you get separate amps. RO works off of a 5.1 ear level mix and then supports four or five speakers up in the ceiling. So that's all I want to like get into as far as the differences are concerned um, before doing just a completely separate RO video. Um, I will throw out one more caveat that RO and Atmos are not strictly speaking compatible on the same system but you can work around that I had to trick my system into properly playing back RO and Atmos without having to reconfigure anything between listenings I had to lie to my receiver so I'm going to link that video in the description below there's a link to that video about how to set up a Denon X6400H and you gotta lie to it on this one screen in the setup telling it that um, a couple of the speakers for Atmos are not where it wants them to be and as long as you do that RO is happy with an Atmos setup but Atmos is not happy with an RO setup let's just put it that way and if you want more information go watch the video so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down. Either way, it's always um, helpful to get your criticism or nice to get your encouragement and um, just to hear your take on things, to have a conversation, to come together and enjoy together this hobby that we love. This has been a sort of rapid response, impromptu music in Atmos video and I hope you got something out of it. And I know that there are lots of people out there who are at least curious about Atmos. They're considering whether they are going to upgrade a system. And even if their system can handle Atmos right now, whether they're going to invest in more speakers. And maybe this video will nudge you one way or the other. Whether in 4.0, 5.1, 7.1, 5.2, 7 7.2, Atmos, RO3D, DTSX, you find a way to live life in surround.